Greetings, brothers and sisters. So this is the other video from yesterday that I was going to do, but it was just too long. This has got some funny stuff. Annie yells at his dogs in Spanish. And then I got the whole thing from when Woody Allen was on, and he did the same thing. So I got a whole compilation of him yelling at his dogs with one of his fake Spanish accents, which is great. So um, let's get into this here. Our last full day out here. Um, we go back home tomorrow. When both places are home, actually. But um, we go home uh, tomorrow. Okay, so I want to give you some context of what he's about to talk about. So Alec Baldwin has this this massive house in East Hampton, which is a very prestigious, you know, wealthy people. Um, type of situation. This is a, the outdoor area where he often makes his videos. I mean, just like a beautiful house here. He just bought a $1.75 million farmhouse in Vermont, which has 50 acres. Here's this old Vermont-style farmhouse. Um, remember, he was. this is where he con got confronted and he yelled at, you know, this is where he told his, he shushed his wife and, excuse me, remember that thing? He did with Hilaria. So he's got this other Vermont house, right? And then he has a an apartment penthouse in New York City that is, uh, here it says it's worth $11.7 million. So this he lives in this building here. He used to make videos in this building when I first started covering him, and his family was in the Hamptons area. So he has like what appears to be like $20 million worth of real estate and this is East Hampton. Now, I went to South Hampton years ago. Some of my friends knew somebody whose parents owned a house in South Hampton. And it was extraordinarily nice there. Right? Beautiful beach houses. Nice town. This is for really rich people. So this is a part of, um, you can see here. Let me see. See, it's a part of Long Island, right? So this is the rich part of Long Island. You know, I lived near here in Hartford, and you know, over in this West Hartford and other places here, Simsbury up here. And so, um, this is just a beautiful area. And then you have New York and Manhattan and all these things, right? And so, um, this is where his Manhattan home is, and this is all really w rich real estate. And so, what he's talking about here is driving from his, you know, luxurious beach house here and driving into Manhattan there, and, you know, all um, very uh, valued real estate in the New York area. Uh, I get my hair cut today, thank God. <laughs> um, I used to work a lot more. I mentioned this to people. I used to work a lot more and, uh, you know, film movies and TV and stuff like that. And, and then you shot a cinematographer, right? <laughs> You used to work, you used to have like a good career. You were, you know, a solid A, solid B actor. You were in a number of, you know, high budget films. You were in some, you know, sitcoms and Saturday Night Live. And you worked all the time. He amassed what he, his net worth is supposedly around $60 million. I kind of question those, you know, sites that, um, I, you know, who knows, right? But He's a multimillionaire, and which is good. You, you know, he deserves it, whatever. He worked, he got jobs, he, you know, he got paid to do his acting thing. But then his career started to go into the toilet, and then there was a scandal with his wife, who was from Boston, Spain, located in Massachusetts, and she was an Anglo girl born by, you know, white Scottish English descendant parents who somehow developed a uh, Spanish accent, even though English was their first language, and people didn't really like that. <laughs> and so that happened. We'll get into his dogs in a little bit. And they shot a co-worker. And now he's not working, right? But he has all this money, he has all this real estate, he's got these kids, you know. I mean, he could just go away, get off of social media, accept things went against you, no matter how innocent you think you are, or want other people to think you are. Just accept what's happened here. And uh, like when I did 30 Rock, uh, the 
one of the great things about that that wasn't the creative experience was that there was somebody to cut my hair and do my nails and make sure I shaved close. And so you can cut your nails yourself, bro. <laughs> but if you have to, you know, there's nail salons, right? <laughs> and there's these things called barbers, <laughs> you know, hairdressers. I mean... <laughs> There's a video of him getting his hair cut, but, I mean, he spends a lot of time on his appearance in this video. Make sure we looked uh, camera ready, as you say, as they say. Um, uh, when we were working. And I haven't really worked very much <laughs> since COVID and beyond with what happened in New Mexico. Pray tell Alex what happened in, what happened in New Mexico. Alec. What happened in New Mexico? I'm not aware of this incident that you speak of. And, um, I miss those days. You know, people would lay out all these beautiful clothes and suits and ties and shirts with French cuffs and cuff links. And it was, a it was a very pleasant experience on a sartorial and tonsorial level, so. Oh, boy. <laughs> Okay, those days are over, Alec, and there's no reason to lament them. Just go to one of your beautiful three houses and enjoy what you have. You have a lot, and just be happy because, you know, it's over. I mean, it's it's over. You can still do things like this on Instagram, but as far as your career, the good days are way behind you. They were behind you before you shot somebody, and then you shot somebody. Anyway, we're going to leave here uh, Saturday and go back to New York, and uh, everybody's very excited about that. I'm excited about that. It's been three years, all of 20, 2000, 2021, now 2022. Not a lot of work for me, home with my kids, which is great. I love I, well, I have seven children. It doesn't sound great, Alec. <laughs> Doesn't sound like you're happy about not working and being home with your kids. Sounds like you'd rather be doing other things. Well, I have seven <clears throat> children, eight total for me, but seven with our coming baby, uh, and not want to spend time with them. I, I, I love being with my kids. Do I want to have a poker game once a week or a doubles tennis match or? Do I want to join a book club or do I want to do a lot of other things? Uh, some of which I used to do, the symphony, the theater, the ballet, the opera, all those things in New York I love. They're all pretentious things and most of those things aren't very kid friendly, right? The poker game, <laughs> the opera, <laughs> the symphony, right? <laughs> Playing tennis. <laughs> you don't can't bring your kids to those things. He said he wished he could do all those things. You know, he's lamenting that, but, you know, if he got a good job for a movie, he leaves the kids in that, you know, that <laughs> that fake accent wife of his behind <laughs> in a heartbeat. Like he's, you know, you see he's bummed. There's no reason to be, right? But he's got all those young kids. He's really old. He's like, you know, he really should be their, their grandfather. I mean, he's got like a, a, a daughter who's in her 20s, you know, and he should be a grand. I mean... He's more look, looking like he's in the grandfather stage. He's older than me, right? And when you get older, it's hard, hard to raise young kids. I mean, young kids are just, they have a lot of energy, a lot of cleanup. And he's got a bunch of young kids. He's got like five, you know, toddler age, kindergarten age, you know, kindergarten age and below kids, six, seven, you know, seven, six, four, five, you know, these kind of ages, right? A couple of babies. And, uh, you know... A crazy wife, <laughs> but he's got nannies and all that stuff. Uh, but, you know, he doesn't want to be there. Like, he's pretending he does, but if he got work, he would take work. Go to the Yankee game or the Giants game or something, but uh, not much time for that now. But I'm I'm cool. <laughs> I'm cool because I, uh, I love my kids to death. I love my kids. It made life uh, special for me. It doesn't sound special, Alec. It sounds kind of sad. It sounds like you're sad, like you're depressed. Plus, you haven't mentioned your wife once. Talk about how great your kids are and being home with them, but you're not talking about your wife. 
it's chilly here this morning. It's chilly. It's amazing how the change. It's really like, I think last night it was in the 60s, like 62, like the low 60s or something. It's chilly. And today it's supposed to be very mild. And um, I just am leaving this message to say, I have a wish for everybody today. And my wish is that as you all head back to um, wherever you are, if you're away from home, so you mean all the people in your audience that own more than one house that go away for the summer in some place like East Hampton <laughs> and then go back to Manhattan or some other place, right? Is that who you're referring to? Because <laughs> that's a small club of people that have that, you know, most people aren't, aren't able to pay their bills or, you know, buy food now. I mean, there's a thing called inflation. You know, your, your president, Jojo Magoo, I mean, you know, I know, I know what you think about Trump. Trump is alone. Trump is an anomaly. Trump is a maniac. But things have gotten way worse for people, and they're just going to get worse. The economy crashed even before Jojo Magoo, even before Trump. It's heading that way. And people are leaving New York in droves. They're leaving blue states. So who are you talking to, Alec, right? I mean, very few people are in your situation where they've been spending the summer somewhere else and they're going back now to, you know, their, their home so their kids can go to school. And I mean, you know, like, what are you talking about? For the holidays and you um, are heading back home on a traditional Labor Day weekend. I know that not every part of the country is like this. You know, in California, they start school earlier, obviously, because they don't have to chase the summer. You know, it's pretty much like the summer there, uh, 80% of the time, you know. Except for June, right? <laughs> um, I went to L.A. for a spiritual gathering in 2016. So what is that? Six years ago, I guess. And, you know, I went with my kids. And the woman I went with, you know, the woman that came with us used to live there. And um, she talked about June gloom. Because we went to the beach and it wasn't freezing, but it was like sweatshirt weather. And people who were swimming were in like wetsuits. And she said, yeah, there's this thing called the June gloom. and It's really dark and, you know, it's kind of cold there. And I'm like, you know, the, the ocean's freezing. And I put my, like, you know, we, put, we walked in. I had like shorts, but it's kind of cold. And, you know, it wasn't like summer. Like I'd expect in even Connecticut ocean. Like you can swim in the ocean in Connecticut. I used to do that. Was a kid where he is, you know, Alec, I mean, because of the, the Gulf Stream. And I realized how much better Florida was. The ocean was dark. And I'm like, Florida is much better. Like, Florida is really what he's talking about. Florida is summer all year round. I mean, there is some cooler weather up north in Florida, but it's still pretty much summer all year round. L.A. is like a myth. I mean, California. There's beautiful places. San Francisco area, I mean, unbelievable. We went there for another gathering and went to the Sequoias and the farmland in, in California, beautiful state. I mean, all, pretty much every state in America is, is fairly beautiful because of the amount of fresh water. We don't realize how uh, privileged we are. And the desert places are spectacular, right? The desert places in America are, you know, magical. But, um, you know, California isn't what people say it is. <laughs> I, I thought California was like Florida. It's not like Florida is the real California. And in the east where I live, we do chase the summer. Uh, the summer is sacred. And everybody makes their plans around some piece of uh, going uh, away to uh, Maine or Vermont. I love Vermont. I love Vermont. It's so magical there. Um, wherever you go, family homes on the Jersey Shore, Delaware, get a little south of Washington. It gets a little toasty for me in the summertime, but they're Long Island where we are. It's East Hampton, right? It's Long Island, but it's like the rich part. You know? <laughs> like there are towns on Long Island. This isn't just, you know, it's one place. It's one Long Island, right? But it's a big island with lots of people, and there are like working class people live in Long Island, and then there are the Hamptons. He lives on beachfront property in New York City. And so, you know, that's some of the most prized real estate in the world, at least it used to be. 
until COVID hit. And now people are bailing and moving out and moving to red states because the blue states and their governors lost their mind during COVID. No one wants to admit this. I mean, they do. I mean, even, um, you know, Cuomo was begging people to come back to the city before, you know, <laughs> they got rid of him. Lake country up north, uh, friends of mine who up in Connecticut and Hudson Valley and beyond, Finger Lakes, Great Lakes, head out to some place pretty like in Wisconsin. I shot a film, we shot the film Prelude to a Kiss in 1991, a long time ago, 30 years ago. Um, and we shot it in Chicago. And all the people that were um, Chicagoites, uh, they all, many of them had their vacation homes and weekend homes in Wisconsin to the, in the lake country. <laughs> See, he's completely clueless, right? He's talking about people who have vacation homes you know, that live in these rich cities, which is expensive to live in, right? Chicago, New York. Like, do you have any regular people that you know, like your maids? You ask your maid where she, her vacation home is, right? <laughs> ask your nannies where their vacation home. Go to the grocery store and ask them where they vacation. <laughs> He's talking about like, you know, yeah, all these people I know, they have their, you know, their their third home and... <laughs> And everybody I know, I drove up there once, so one day I had off, I didn't get very far, but I drove up to Wisconsin, and uh, just stunning. I mean, the, this whole lake uh, experience in Wisconsin was just, it's breathtaking. But anyway, I'm rambling, I'm sorry. Um, but um, wherever you are, if you're coming home from a holiday in the coming days, travel safely and uh, get a haircut back to school we're all getting our haircuts my sons and I we're all gonna go and get our back to school haircuts and then um, hope everybody has a good fall he's really losing it you know I think he's starting to unravel like <laughs> he's he needs somebody to give him a mercy job right like being some you know some uh local town play or something is <laughs> He's got to get away from Larry and those effing kids. With your jobs, that we'd be grateful. That we have gratitude for what we have. We have gratitude for what we have. I mean, this could be a lot worse. It could be tough. That we have gratitude for what we have. Yeah, things could be worse. You could have shot, you know, your cinematographer. <laughs> he just doesn't sound very grateful. You know, I'm a big grateful person. I applaud gratitude and, you know, even him putting that out there, I mean, even superficially, you know, it's, I mean, I'm, I'm all for it, right? But this doesn't sound very, it's like he's trying to convince himself to be grateful. Like it's, you know, it's winding down. Uh, you know, a lot of these people who thought it would be like great for them, you know, these Democrats and these rich Hollywood fakeivists and all these people, when Trump lost, they're still obsessed with Trump. They're still miserable. You know, they're not happy people, right? They're not, they don't enjoy their, you know, whatever it is. And so um, they're kind of bumming now because I mean, whatever went on with Jojo Magoo, he didn't deliver. And they might want to think he did. They'll try to rationalize it. But, you know, things aren't better. That our children are safe and healthy and happy and they get back to school. And uh, I'm, if you ask me if I could have one wish... If I could have one wish, it wouldn't be for myself. I'd say I hope that everybody else is okay. I'd like to be okay, too, in some departments. But uh, um, I wish that everybody was okay. Do you think you might have wished to, you know, not shoot the cinematographer? I mean, <laughs> you know, don't you have something? Wouldn't it be that, like, you know, if you're going to wish for something, wouldn't it be that, like, I mean, that would help you and somebody else, but... You know, mostly you. But wouldn't that be your wish? Come on, bro. One wish that that gun was never loaded or you didn't pull the trigger or whatever it is. I mean, there's various ways that wish could be done where the cinematographer doesn't get shot. That they had a job. And at the very least, it wasn't a job that they hated or they felt demeaned or, or overlooked. But they had a job, a good job. They could pay their bills. Most jobs suck, right? 
Like there's lots of jobs and some people like doing them. So that's great. Like if you like doing your job, that's great. There are a lot of people out there who do jobs that they hate or really dislike and the job sucks them dry. And it's, you know, being a wage slave. Like he's just oblivious to, I mean, it's people like working in your house. (laughs) And, you know, I mean, you think they love it? Like, (laughs) Maybe we all have to work hard. You know, when I was a little kid, I, I, I worked hard. I did a lot of things, but you know, before I got into this business and had a different kind of a life. Um, but um, maybe people have jobs where they have to work hard, hard. It's tough, but they have a job and they can support their family. Everybody can have that beautiful, 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 beautiful feeling. That incredible feeling that you feel like your family's taken care of. I am someone, I'm 64 years old, and everything to me is about family. Yeah, I don't think anybody really believes that. (laughs) If I were president of the United States, I'd sit down with a think tank and all we would do is think about what are the things that are going to make things easier in this life for families regardless of what kind of family and i've said that before on these posts regardless of uh what kind of family to married men married women doesn't matter trans this gay this what it doesn't matter if you have kids and you're a family and you're trying to raise your family what laws can be passed to make life easier for people have a family for a guy who talks about government and you know political process he doesn't understand the government at all if he was president he would have a think tank to create laws and how to make life easier for people like what (laughs) no one's gonna fund that no one's gonna pass laws it has to go through a you know the congress and the house and these things nobody's interested in making life easier for ordinary folks and, you know, as president, you couldn't do that. Like, he's he's just, um, he's kind of losing it, right? We won't ignore everybody that doesn't have a family, but try to make their life easier, too. But um, make life better. Make it less difficult to raise a family. People keep commenting about the bags under my eyes all summer. And I'm assuming I have a late onset uh, allergy this summer. Because my eyes have been very puffy. So this is when I first noticed these, I don't know, first noticed, but they were very prevalent. He did some work in London. He shot the cinematographer in October 2021. In February of this year, he went to London, and there were some pretty good video clips that came out of that, some good funny stuff. (laughs) He's just great. (laughs) He gives me a lot of material. But um, his bags, he started looking really like Calibus, you know, from... um, the original Clash of the Titans. It's funny. Uh, I get to the airport. You can see he was rocking serious caliber size. Fly on a sleeper flight. Uh, and I get to the airport. I mean, this is when I really started to notice that he's not doing well, right? Well, this is the real bad one. So this is like a day after. Away from home. Away from the U.S., I look at well, seriously looking rough here. Little places like this, and I think, what's it like to live here? What, how, what would it be like to live here? Once I saw what other people were like, and they were different from me. They were like, stay out of trouble, get into trouble, slalom between the two. Just looking really demonic here. I'm in this little town. It's just such a... It's nice to get out of the U.S. and see how things are different and how they're the same. It never ceases to amaze me. Um, anyway, I'm going to do a little diary while I'm here. Uh, you can see that no matter where I go around the world, my hair is... So at one of these things, I don't know which one, I'm not going to find it. He talked about how someone came up and thought he was homeless, right? <laughs> he was, you know, he was in some hard times. But anyways, it ain't allergies, right? We've seen this for a while, at least back in February. I mean, he's been, you know, I mean, I think 
he's been destroyed by this event. Like you can't, how, you know, how, how, how could you really be the same after shooting somebody? And, you know, in the circumstances that it happened, whatever. He wants to think it's an accident. But he was holding a gun that shot a bullet that killed somebody he was working with. And, you know, like he ain't ever going to be the same. I normally don't wake up anymore and look in the mirror, if I, even if I ever did. Even if he ever did. <laughs> Nobody believes that either. I don't wake up and look in the mirror and go, oh, there he is. Ooh, you, you, you. And you have to tell us that why, right? <laughs> you thought we all thought you did that, so you have to dispel that rumor? <laughs> Or is it something that you actually do or did? You, I don't do that. I try to avoid looking in the mirror at my age now, but uh, I think that these bags are under my eyes all summer because it only happened when I got out here. We came out here for the summer, all of a sudden, wow. I have these big buttons. I think I must have some late onset allergy out here or something. Well, they're at least there in February and you were in England. So they're not allergies, bro. I don't know how long you've had them, but they've been around for at least six months, probably longer. And, you know, they ain't going away. It's been a little weird. Oh, well, here we go. Oh, good girls, 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 girls. Hey, Tanta, come and sit, baby. Hey, Tanta, come. Hey, Tanta, come. That's my cue. Um, shh, 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 shh. Sit, 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 sit. Come, sit. come here. I want you all to have a wonderful Labor Day weekend. Get home safely. Hope your families are safe. And I hope you guys have a great start of the school year. And uh, like I said, if I had one wish, if I had one wish, it would be that everybody else, uh, and maybe myself included, but I hope that everybody in the world had what they needed and pray for the people of Pakistan. Bye. You know, it just sounds sad. It's like some kind of desperate cry for help. Um, but... I noticed this in the other video and then there at the end of this video. He yells at his dogs with a Spanish accent. Like he has this fake Spanish accent. I'm going to show you that. Um, I'll show you the, the mirror clip too because why not? <laughs> we'll revisit that. That's going to be a meme. And, um, you know, when he's with Woody Allen, he yelled at his dogs with a Spanish accent. So let's get into all that here. And it's, you know, kind of hilarious because... He's not Spanish. His wife's not Spanish. But somehow their dogs only understand English with somebody faking a, a poor Spanish accent, right? I don't wake up and look in the mirror and go, oh, there he is. Ooh, you, you, you. Consider the source. Oh, she's a white girl. Yes, I am a white girl. I am a white girl. And so, for example, my wife's on the phone with her hairdresser or a friend. She's like, really? Okay, I can't wait to see you. That's going to be great. Fantastic. What time? 12 o'clock? My wife is from Spain. Mm -hmm. And she said, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Mayonela! Mayonela! Basta! Los paritas, basta! Las paritas, suficiente! Ay, ay, ay. Si. Sí. Itana, idama, ben? The, uh... But, uh, Itana! Itana, come! Dama! Itana! Itana! No! Come! Itana, come! Itana, hush! I'm being upstaged by a dog. That's where my career is at right now. Itanta! Come! Ay, ay, ay! Si. It's been a little weird. Oh, well, here we go. Oh, good girls, 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 girls. Hey, Tanta, come and sit, baby. Hey, Tanta, come. Hey, Tanta, come. That's my cue. Um, shh, 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 shh. Sit, 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 sit. Shh. Come and sit, come here. Dama, come. It's hilarious he'd be talking to, uh, talking to his dogs in a Spanish accent. <laughs> Like, that's how effed up things, right? Alec, your bitch doesn't speak Spanish. <laughs> I mean, the dogs. 
you don't need to speak to him in a Spanish accent. You you know, English and your wife's first language is English, as is yours. And so you can just speak in an American accent to your dogs. You know, they're dogs. Right? <laughs> Anyways, that's really wonderful. Only spirituality will save this. m and in world. It's Paul Romano, definitely important for the apocalypse. In the ascension, everyone have a blessed day and be grateful.